Welcome back, Bikeaholics. Ryan Erlacher here with LawAbidingBiker.com. Thanks for checking back in. Sitting next to me is Kevin Koreski. We've got him in the shop today. He was nice enough to bring over his 2008 Honda VTX. As you'll see behind me, the Honda VTX doesn't come with a bat wing fairing like that. We've got a complete uh, other video on that, and that is uh, LawAbidingBiker.com forward slash Honda fairing. Complete install video. It's uh, the stealth fairing, and we'll show you uh, kind of where he got that. We talk about how much it costs. And then of course, we do the full installation for you. And uh, of course it can be paint matched, which it's not yet. This particular video today is, now that we have the bat wing fairing on, we wanna install a stereo system in it. And so Kevin's came up with, uh, this is kind of a piece together kit, but we certainly wanted to show you guys how you can do this too. This isn't a kit you buy specifically for a motorcycle. He was able to come up with an Alpine uh, uh, stereo head unit. This is not made for motorcycles, so it's not waterproof, guys. Something you might want to think about when you're installing, but Kevin's aware of that, and uh, he'll just have to keep the water away from it. it actually comes from an, an automobile. So um, additionally, he's got just some Pioneer speakers. We're pretty sure this is hot too. Definitely probably hot if Kevin brought it, but we're not, never mind that. Um, anyways, we also got speakers, and uh, these are also automotive speakers. So a lot of the aftermarket motorcycle stuff, guys, you know, uh, is waterproof so you can wash your bike. He's not gonna be able to, he's gonna have to be real careful when he's doing that, but nonetheless, it will work. And we've got some wiring. We're gonna have to tie into power. We're gonna show you all the ins and out of that. And uh, of course, this fairing is made when he ordered it. The stealth fairing was made for a deck. Um, and uh, he got the one with that you can fit two four and a half inch speakers in. So with that said, I say, uh, let's dig in and get started, huh? Okay, now to start this project off, we've got to take the front of this bat wing fairing off. They're starting at the top and removing the three bolts and nuts that hold the windshield on and the top part of the fairing together. They're using a four millimeter Allen and a 10 millimeter uh, box end wrench to take that off. When they get done with those top three, they'll be able to pull the windshield out. And then they'll have to move to the bottom. Underside of the fairing, there are four screws or bolts, one on each, or two on each side. Those are also a four millimeter Allen wrench. They're gonna take those out and then they'll be able to pull the front of that fairing right off. Now they've got all the uh, bolts out of the fairing, the three on the top and the four on the bottom. They're gonna lift that front piece off. And as you see, now we have access to the inside of the fairing. Now we can mount the stereo in the center in that rectangular slot and then the speakers in the round holes. Now to get ourselves into some hot and negative terminals here, we're gonna remove the seat. He's got a five millimeter Allen on the back to take the, the bolt out of the back. Then he's got a 12 millimeter ratchet. There's a bolt on each side he's got to take out to get access to the battery and take the seat off. Our plan is to uh, hook the positive and negative directly to the battery. And then we need to find a remote power. When I say remote power, I'm talking about a switch power, something that turns on and off. That's what cues the stereo to turn on and off uh, with the bike. And there goes the seat. Okay, now we have the seat off on each side of the bike. Uh, there are some chrome trim pieces you see that pull just out or pushed into grommets, rubber grommets and connections. Real similar to a Harley actually. By pulling those off, we're gonna get access to uh, the battery and some wires and we're gonna uh, remove some stuff to get into the battery here. There's a plastic tray that sits over the top of the battery. Ryan's gonna take some screws out and open that up and give us access to the battery. And Ryan's taking the last screw out of the plastic cover that sits over the top of the battery. Once he gets that little guy out of the way, he's going to pop the ECM and uh, move that over out of the way and disconnect it from the plastic trim. There you go. He just pulled the plastic cover off and we have access to our battery. All right, what you're seeing there is a real simple tester. It's just a one wire tester. He's going to connect the jumper right there to the negative side of the battery and then he's got the probe on the other end. You see when it lights up that means he's hit a hot wire. It's a simple little uh, tester. You can get them on uh, through Amazon. You can use our affiliate link. Just jump over to lawbodybiker.com, go to the general affiliates and hit Amazon and click on through and help put a little fuel in the law abiding gas tank and keep this motor running on down the road. Back to what we're doing here. So we're looking for a remote power and again what I mean by that is one that switches on and off that's going to tell the stereo to turn on or turn off when the Kevin turns his key on so Ryan's going to start probing here he's found one he likes and once he gets it probed he'll turn the switch on and off oh voila he is that good folks he already found one so that's why we're going to uh, tap into 
to uh, use our remote power. Happens to be uh, red with a black stripe on, on this bike. There's probably several wires you can hook into. You just need to use your tester, find yourself one that switches on and off with the key. And now that we've found our uh, remote wire, Ryan's going to unhook the battery terminals here because we're going to clip a wire and uh, God forbid he touches a frame or something and sends sparks flying all over. So just for safety, make sure you connect your leads to your battery. And what Ryan's doing is cutting back some of the stock wire loom, just getting it out of the way. And once he gets that back far enough, he will uh, snip the red with a wire with the black stripe. That was our remote power. He's separating it out. He'll cut that bad boy in half. Bzz, oh, we're good. And then we're going to tap into that, and uh, that'll be our remote wire to turn the stereo on and off. He's just going to trim that uh, loom back out of the way, and then when we're all done, uh, we'll wrap that up again real nice and neat. And we've got a yellow butt connector, and he's going to butt connect on one side. And we're not going to uh, button up the other side yet because we still got to fish the wire for it. But now we've got our positive to the battery, negative to the battery, and then we'll put that remote to where he's butt connecting. So the next thing we'll do is uh, run some wires. All right, so now we've got our wires here. You'll see they got three different colors. We've got a yellow, a red, and a black. The stereo that we have has also a yellow, red, and black. On this stereo, the uh, yellow is hot, the red is switched, and the black is ground. So what they're going to do is take those three wires and they're going to wrap them with electrical tape so that we've got a nice bundle that we can run up underneath the tank from the battery area all the way up to the stereo. So what they're going to do is take that electrical tape and just start wrapping it all the way around and make a really nice custom made wire loom. Now, as you can see, they got all three of those wires uh, taped together, made their custom wire loom there. And Ryan is guiding the wire up underneath the tank and off of the engine. And he's going to run uh, one end into the battery compartment so we can hook the positive and negative and the um, remote up. The other one will fish up along the uh, frame there and up into the fairing. And he's just going to work on that for a moment. You can run it any way you want. You can. Uh, just as long as you get it up there, try and hide it and make it look good and keep it up off the motor so that uh, it doesn't melt. And what Ryan's doing here is putting uh, terminals on the end of the yellow and the black wire. Black wire is ground, yellow is hot, our red is our remote. Again, we chose those colors because it matches up with the stereo that we're putting in. So he's going to put those on. We're not going to hook them to the battery yet because we still have some wiring to do on the other end, but he's just getting it all prepared. And once he gets those two done, he's going to move on down and now use the butt connector and slide it all together and uh, connect our remote power in there in line with our earlier wire, the red and black. Again, you may choose a different one. It doesn't really matter as long as you find one that turns on and off with the ignition switch. So something interesting here is uh, we got to run these power wires up into the fairing. They did not provide us with a channel or any way to get those wires up in there. So we got to drill a small hole in the bottom of the interfering to get the wires up into there. You'll see he's got some uh, scotch tape on there, some paper tape where he's going to drill. What that does is kind of keeps everything from splintering, keeps it together. And a little trick when you're uh, drilling through fiberglass, if you run the drill backwards, it, it'll uh, go through and it won't grab all the fiberglass and rip it all apart. It takes longer, but it makes a much better hole. Here he goes. And now we've got the hole drilled through there um, where Ryan's pointing at. Now you can't see the underside of that fairing when it's mounted, so we didn't, uh, um, weren't too concerned about it. But if it's a hole you're going to see, like when we go to mount the speakers, you're going to want to make sure that you drill through from the painted side so you get a nice clean hole on that side and there's no splintering. Again, we weren't too concerned about it uh, because you can't see up in there and see that. Hopefully you're enjoying the video. If you want to make sure that content and these free videos keep coming your way, there is a way you can support us. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. The community is growing over there. We'd like to have you involved too. Um, there's no risk over there. You can sign up for a certain level um, and pay a certain amount per piece of content with a cap. Absolutely no risk. There are some benefits over there, um, t-shirts, and a private Facebook group and some premium content. All depends on what level you sign up as. 
but that is a way that you can assure the content keeps coming your way. Lawabidingbiker.com slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Of course, if you ever want to just leave a flat donation, we do accept that too and appreciate it. Lawabidingbiker.com slash donate. Don't forget to check out that weekly podcast, guys. It's on fire. A ton of content we're putting out. Get involved over there. It's a Law Abiding Biker podcast. All right, let's get back into your video. Now, Ryan, because he's got small, childlike hands, is the one that's going to be fishing the wires up through. You see it poking through. Kevin's going to grab onto it and run it up on through so that we can wire up the deck. Okay, so we ran into a little issue here, a uh, fitment issue. The uh, hole is not quite wide enough, as you can see, to get the cage in for the uh, stereo. So what we're going to do here is use our trusty little Dremel tool and uh, take just a little bit off. I mean, it's it's you know very very small amount so Kevin's gonna use that Dremel tool just make the hole a little bit wider all right now you can see we've got the cage for the stereo mounted in there a uh, little tip there uh, safety tip is when you're uh, dealing with fiberglass and you're cutting and grinding make sure that you wear a at least a dust mask just to keep the uh, particulates out of your lungs. It's kind of nasty stuff. So we've got that in there now and I'm gonna go around the other side and we'll show you how to uh, use the tabs to um, secure that cage to the fairing. All right, now uh, Kevin's working on the front side and uh, you're looking at the cage from the back side. You'll see there's lots of little uh, um, tabs in there. And what you do is you push these tabs down and wrap them up against the fiberglass or several of them just go all the way around there and just push them all down and get it snugged in there and when he gets done using all those tabs all the way around it's going to securely mount that cage to the fiberglass fairing now he's working on top there i'll push that one up and you can tell it's just slowly getting more and more solid as he does that all right now kevin's got the cage securely fastened to the fairing he's going to put the deck in place it just, you push the wires through the cage. Easier said than done. All right, now he's got the wires through there. So now he's gonna push it on through. Now you need to make sure that you push this thing all the way in until it clicks and locks in place. All right, we got the deck mounted in there and we've got our uh, red, yellow, and black wires coming from the bike. We got our red, yellow, and black wires coming from the stereo because we're nifty like that. So we're going to connect these with butt connectors. He's going to hook up the uh, remote power there first and butt connect it. You can solder it if you want, but for stereo type installation, butt connectors are fine. And he's going to do that on all three wires, red to red, yellow to yellow, black to black. And that may be different on whatever stereo you use. This stereo just happened to be red, black, and yellow, and we had some red, black, and yellow wiring, so we wanted it to match up. All right, we got our positive, our remote power, and our negative hooked up. Now Ryan's moving on to the speakers. Uh, we got a uh, gray wire with a gray stripe on one side, a white wire, and a white wire with a black stripe on the other. The uh, side with the stripe is the negative. Uh, you may not see it in the camera, but the speaker wire that he's using also has a white stripe on it. So he's going to put the stripe side to the stripe side and non-stripe to the non-stripe. That way we can keep our polarity correct and our uh, speakers will throw the right direction. So now he's got speaker wires ready to go for the right side and he's going to move over and do the same thing for the left on the white wires. So we're going to rock the uh, handlebars down out of the way because we need to drill through to mount the uh, speakers. So uh, these bolts here have little uh, chrome decorative covers that pop down into the allen so you just take a little screwdriver there and pop that bad boy up out of the way get all four of those out of the way and then uh, take the six millimeter allen wrench loosen up uh, all four of those bolts you don't need to take them out just loosen them up and once they are all loose the handlebars will roll down out of the way voila now we got lots of room. All right, now Ryan is holding a speaker up in place there on the fairing, and Kevin's going to make some marks there and mark where we want these uh, holes drilled so that we can put the bolts through to hold the speaker on. And uh, Kevin just brought over two speakers today. He's got to get some more, so we're just going to be mounting up two. That's why you'll still see a couple holes there, but uh, later on he's going to mount his other two speakers in there. Okay, we've got our uh, holes mounted on or uh, marked on the uh, fairing. 
Kevin's got his drill bit. He's going to artfully drill four beautiful holes in that fairing. Again, remember if you run the drill backwards, it uh, will take you a little more time to get the bit through, but it doesn't grab on to the fiberglass and rip it all apart. And he's doing an excellent job there. And he's going to drill that hole, then he's going to go around and do all four. And now Ryan is holding the speaker in place and Kevin's going to put the uh, bolts through. Uh, we got some 8 32nd, or actually number 8 uh, by 32 thread, I believe it is. Uh, 3 quarter inch long bolts, number 8 bolts, 30, 3 quarters of an inch long. And uh, Kevin is going to put them in while Ryan's holding the speaker. And he's going to start with one, just work his way around there and get all four of them in there. They have all four of the bolts in now and uh, the nuts on the back. Ryan's uh, holding the nut on the back. Kevin's tightening up the bolt. Get all four of those and that speaker will be mounted and then we'll switch around the other side of the fairing so you can uh, see how they actually hook the wires up. And now we're on the other side of the fairing there. You can see the speaker's mounted in and what Ryan's doing is uh, butt connecting some slide on terminals onto the positive and the negative speaker wire. When he gets those crimped on, he will slide them into place on the speaker. Uh, the negative is the stripe, striped wire, and the positive is the one without the stripe. So he's going to button those on and then slide them onto the speaker. And then all you're going to do is repeat this process for the other side, mount your speakers, and connect them. So what we did for the speaker, you're just going to do it on the other side. And we've got uh, both speakers mounted in now, so we're actually going to connect our stereo up. Uh, and uh, Ryan's in there in the battery compartment. He's going to put the main terminal back on the positive side, along with the uh, wire for the stereo, the hot wire, and one accessory. Get that in there, and he'll button that down. Then he'll go over to the negative, or yes, the negative side, and he'll mount the negative for the stereo, the negative for the one accessory, and we'll be in business. And he's got both of the terminals all hooked up, negative and positive. Time to return the plastic battery cover back to its rightful place. It'll pop in and that had uh, three screws that held it on. And he just got the last screw buttoned up there. Now he's popping the ECM back in place. He's flip it over and get it right in place there. And then I'll uh, do a little wire management and get the seat back on. Now we got the seat back in place using the T-handled Allen wrench in the back to tighten the screw in the back. And then there's one on each side of the seat in about the middle here, right there where he's putting it in. One on this side, one on the other. And get that tightened down. Okay, before we put the seat on, we function checked it. So we're gonna show you it's working now. We got the ignition turned on. He's hitting the source button. Stereo comes on, Let's see if we hear some noise. Oh, she's working. Outstanding. All right, now we need to get these bars back up in place. So Kevin's sitting on the bike. He's going to get them to where he likes them. And tighten down the four bolts, and the bars will be back in place. There's one. And just go around the horn there. All right, now we got both speakers in. And like I said earlier, this is for four speakers. Kevin just had uh, two. He'll be mounting the other two later. And uh, we've did some wire management there. We've got everything taped up and zipped up so it won't be flopping around inside there. Now the guys are gonna put the uh, outside of the fairing back on. There was four bolts that go on the bottom, holding it on the bottom, and then three across the top that hold the top together and hold the windshield together as well. And they've got the four bolts on the bottom holding the bottom of the Batwing fairing together. Now they're sliding the windshield in place. And they'll put the three bolts that go across the top that hold the window shield on and the top of the fairing together. And uh, we compared this uh, windshield to a street glide windshield, uh, your 08 to 2012 type variety, and they were the same. This kit came with a tinted shield and a clear shield. Kevin's chose to put the tinted one on because his future's so bright and he's tinted. And this install would not be complete without a biker gripper. We got our stereo, we got our speakers, we got our bat wing fairing. What do we need? We need the biker gripper. It is the sexiest, it is the sleek, it is 
It is the toughest cell phone and accessory mount on on the market. 18 pounds of grip strength. This thing's been through a couple collisions and the cell phone hasn't even moved. This is the universal mount that'll mount onto the handlebars. It comes with spacers. It'll fit seven eighths inch bars up to inch and a quarter. There's the spacers. He's gonna use a medium sized spacer. Put the universal mount around there and tighten it down. This kit comes with everything you need, including Allen wrenches to put it on. It's available in black, it's available in chrome, it's available in a universal bar mount like you're seeing right now. It's also available in a mount that hooks onto the control cluster and replaces the pinch bolts that Ryan's pointing at right there. So you could even mount it there. It's a really sleek unit. It's no crap that's made in uh, overseas. This is American made CNC machined aluminum. And we'll uh, watch him put it on here and then we'll show you how it works. He's got that control mount mounted on there. Now he's mounting the actual biker gripper. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This thing is available at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store or forward slash biker gripper. And there's all kinds of information on that page there that you can check out and explain all about this biker gripper. Fully adjustable, up, down, left, right. You could even loosen up the uh, control mount if you needed to to get some more adjustment. Phone pops in like that and you're good to go. So here's what it looks like all put together. We got the uh, stealth batwing fairing put on there. The uh, tinted visor looking pretty good. And again, you can color match this to match your bike. We're gonna go around the other side here. Give you a look at that. Got the uh, stereo work in. And again, he's just got the two speakers in there, but he's gonna be mounting some more. Pretty cool. If you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel, you are really missing out. We have a ton of videos in the works for you guys, so get subscribed. Also sign up for the free email club, lawabidingbiker.com slash email club. We will shoot you an email when we come out with new free videos. Also, do not forget to check out that weekly podcast. It's the Law Abiding Biker Podcast. It's heard worldwide. All right, peace out.